Hello, my name is Jacques, and today we're going to continue learning the basics of the Bevy game engine. Bevy is a simple data-driven game engine built in Rust. It's free and open source. This tutorial is the 10th episode in my Learn Bevy 0.10 video series. This episode builds on what we learned in the previous episodes. If you've been enjoying the series and finding it helpful, please consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends that would also be interested to learn how to make games and join the Bevy community. Today we're going to be continuing with our Bevy ball game project that we've been working on. In today's episode, we're going to learn how to make a user interface for our game using Bevy UI. The Bevy UI crate is the first party GUI library built by Bevy to create user interfaces for both 2D and 3D games. UI is laid out with the Flexbox model, which we'll investigate soon. Let's hop back to our code and get started. First, I want to quickly correct two mistakes I made in my last video. The first mistake is regarding the changing state API. If we look at our top level directory and go to the systems file, you can see what I'm talking about here in both of these systems. In the last video, I showed you how to change state using commands to insert the next state resource with the type that you want. This works just fine, but it's not the preferred API. We can see the preferred API above here, where we directly get the next state resource mutably with the type that we want, and then in the body of our system, call the set method on it, passing in the new type that we want. This is the preferred API for changing state in our games. Again, the previous method works just fine, but this is the preferred method. I leave it up to you which one to use, but you should probably use the preferred set method as well. I've updated the project source code to use the preferred API. You can either go and download the updated code for episode 9, or pause the video and go through your project now to update your code to use the preferred API. I'm not going to go through each case in this video so we can keep things moving, but it's as simple as getting rid of commands, adding in the next state resource of the type that you want, and then changing this line where we're using commands to insert the resource to just calling the set method on the resource directly with your new type. Next is one more mistake I'd like to fix. In our source game player module, before I had the following code, and I wasn't quite sure how to combine these into one system set, but as you can see here with the after code, specifically right here, ignore that, that's for the other systems, but just these two parts. That's how it used to be. And you can actually combine them using add systems, passing in your player movement system, putting it in its movement system set, the confined player movement system in the confined system set, and then add both of them to the app state game set and the simulation state running set. Just another preferred API change. It doesn't change the behavior at all. The other way works. This way is just preferred. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the old way and my comments here. Just to clean things up, you can see that's the player plugin. With those two corrections done, let's move on. I want to do a quick bit of housekeeping to prevent one more bug later on in this episode. In the game systems module, I want to add two new systems. Here above toggle simulation, I want to add a pause simulation system and a resume simulation system. These are both going to be quite simple. For the system parameters of our pause simulation, we're going to want a mutable reference to next state of type simulation state, which is the preferred API we just discussed. In the body of our system, I simply want to call the set method on the next state resource of type simulation state and pass in simulation state paused to pause the simulation. For a resume simulation, we're going to have the same system parameter and simply the opposite where we start running our simulation. Let's go to our game module now in our game plugin. Before my plugins, I want to add an on enter state system with add system. I want my pause simulation system we just wrote in schedule on enter app state game. So we're going to immediately pause the game when the game starts. This is just to get the player situated and then start playing the game. Here after my systems, I'm going to also want an on exit system, add system, resume simulation, in schedule, on exit, app state game, save to format and remember the semicolon there. And then one final change here in simulation state, I want to change the default to be running instead of paused. And that's it for our fixes and cleanup. Let's get started on learning Bevy UI. 
Let's get started on learning Bevy UI. Bevy UI uses the Flexbox model to lay out user interfaces. If you have web development experience with HTML, CSS, and Flexbox, picking up Bevy UI should be relatively straightforward. If you have experience building UI using an editor, for instance, mobile applications in Android Studio or Xcode, or if you have experience making game UI in other game engines like Godot or Unity, or if you have no UI experience at all, the learning curve can be quite steep. Hopefully, when Bevy 0.11 comes out with the first version of the Bevy Game Engine Editor, I hope there will be a way to build out your UI in the editor, but for now, we do it all in code. Now, teaching the entire Flexbox model is outside the scope of this tutorial series, but I'll do my best to give you a quick survival guide in a moment. There are a lot of resources online for learning the Flexbox model. The Bevy UI documentation links to this web page, which you can use as a reference. If you Google Flexbox, you'll also find tons of guides and tutorials, like this one at the top, a complete guide to Flexbox. This one also has a nice free poster you can download as a reference guide. If you search YouTube, you'll also find tons of Flexbox tutorials. I think a good starting point could be the CSS Flexbox in 100 seconds by Fireship video. Regardless of which tutorial you look at, just try to understand the high-level concepts and diagrams, because the code is going to be different. Flexbox is traditionally used with CSS in combination with HTML. In our case, we're going to be writing all our code in Rust, which will look completely different. With that said, let me try to give you my quick survival guide. In the Flexbox model, we lay out our UI using a parent-child hierarchy of boxes, where each box can be given rules on how to lay out its children. Say this is our screen. Let's create a box that fills up our screen by having the same width and height as our screen. We can give this box we just created certain flexbox properties, like row or column. Say we tell it to be a row. All children of this box will now be laid out in a row. Depending on the alignment, they could all be aligned to the left, the right, the center, top left, bottom right. It all just depends on which flexbox properties we give this parent container now. If we change the parent container to use the column property, now all our children boxes would be laid out in a column. We can continue this hierarchy of boxes as many times as we want. For example, we could create two children laid out in a row, give the one child a column layout with more children, split the other one in two, maybe create two children in this one. You can continue infinitely nesting these to get the UI layout that you'd like. As an exercise, try to find a screenshot of a game with a UI that's not too complicated and try to just box out how you would lay out their boxes using Flexbox. This is perhaps not the best example as this is quite complicated, but I'll give it a try. To start, we've got our screen and then maybe a top row there, another row there for the stars, another center box, another box here at the bottom. This bottom one looks like it's broken down into three. Here at the top here, here's another, this could be another three. Inside of the top one here, you can see it could be like another two inside each of these, one for the image icon, one for the progress bar. Inside each of these bottom ones, you can see it gets very complicated very fast. Maybe there's like one big one and then a side one another bigger one. This one could then get split like that. You can see this can get very complicated very quickly as you try to build out more complex user interfaces. For our game, I've sketched out the following designs just to keep things simple. I've created a main menu mockup, a heads up display mockup for while we're playing the game, a pause menu mockup, and a game over menu. Even with just these four screens, you'll, you'll soon see how much code it takes just to create these four simple menus. We've now finished discussing that Bevy UI uses the Flexbox model for its styling to control how we lay out our user interfaces. Aside from styling our layout with Flexbox, we're gonna see how we actually use Bevy ECS to build slash spawn our UI, interact with our UI, and update our UI. Just like we did before with systems and queries, using commands and resources and state. To do this, we're gonna be using four main building blocks provided by Bevy. First is the node bundle, which is just 
a blank empty box. Next is the button bundle, which we can use to detect if a user has clicked on a piece of UI. Next is the image bundle, which is clearly used to display images. And lastly, the text bundle, which is used to display text. With these four building blocks, we can build very complicated and complex UIs. Let's hop back to our code and get started. We're going to start by coding out our main menu. In the source directory, in the main menu directory, here in the main menu module that we already created, we have our main menu plugin. Right now it's empty. This is where we're going to start creating our main menu UI. Now, just a heads up, the folder structure and layout of my Rust files that I'm going to use for my UI is quite opinionated, but I think it works well. Feel free to arrange things however you like. I'm going to start by creating a new folder called systems inside of main menu and creating a module for systems, mod.rs. Now this module is just gonna hold two sub-modules. I'm gonna create one more file inside of the systems directory called layout.rs and another one called interactions.rs. In the systems module, I'm now gonna declare those two modules as public. Interactions and layout. Save. Now in the main menu module, I'm going to create two new files, one called components.rs and another called styles.rs. So in our main menu folder, we've got a components file, a module file, and a styles file. In our systems module inside a main menu, we've got a module file, a layout file, and an interactions file. In main menu module, we need to also declare our components and styles module and systems module. We'll say mod components, mod styles, mod systems. Cargo build to make sure everything's all right. Everything looks good. Let's get started on our layout systems. Let's start by importing Bevy. Use Bevy Prelude. Next, let's create two systems. Let's call one spawn main menu and another called despawn main menu. I'm going to create another function below these two called build main menu. Build main menu is not going to be a system. This is simply going to be a Rust function that takes in the following arguments, commands, but instead of mute commands commands, we're going to say commands of type mutable reference to commands. And for the second argument, we're going to say asset, asset server of type reference to resource of type asset server. And for the return type, we're going to make this function return an entity. How do we do that? Let main menu entity get commands dot spawn. And here we want to use one of our first fundamental UI building blocks of type node bundle. Node bundle We'll set the background color to red and leave the rest as default. Remember to put a semicolon there. And now we return our main menu entity. One mistake here. On the spawn function, we need to call dot ID to make this of type entity. And now we can return our main menu entity of type entity. Build main menu looks good now. In spawn main menu, for our system parameters, we're gonna need mute commands, commands, and asset server of type resource asset server. In the system body now, we're gonna simply call our build main menu function and pass in these two parameters. Build main menu, mutable reference to commands, reference to asset server. Remember this returns an entity, so let's say let main menu entity get build main menu semicolon. So why create a function to pass in these system arguments into perform some logic and then return an entity? The short answer is I wanted to show you that you could do it and it is very helpful when you get these more complicated systems and especially with UI where you have to build out a lot of discrete pieces it can be quite helpful to break them out into these little functions to build out pieces of your UI and then call them from a system. Let's continue. Let's go to main menu module and here let's get rid of this placeholder system we had. Let's create some on enter and on exit state systems. For our first on enter state system, we'll say add system, spawn main menu, in schedule, on enter, app state main menu. We need to import these below our modules here. Let's say use systems layout 
all. We also want to use our app state. So we'll say use create app state. And that looks good. Let's add an on exit system now to despawn as well. Add system, despawn main menu, and schedule on exit, app state main menu. Let's go back to main menu systems layout and look at our first and most important component when it comes to UI, the style component. Let's investigate the documentation for The style component is the most important component you're going to be customizing and using when building out a user interface in Bevy UI. Expanding this, this is where you specify all the flexbox properties of your UI node, the size of your UI node, margin, padding, border, and other various styling properties. I highly recommend you have this page of the documentation open when working with Bevy UI. Right now, we're only interested in the size property. Here in our style component, let's set the size to be of type size new, 100% of the screen's width, 100% of the screen's height. Note, this isn't always the screen, but the parent of this node, which in this case is the screen since this is the first one. Let's set the rest of these variables to default for now. And don't forget a comma there save and now let's try to cargo run this and see what we see there we go this is our main menu entity with a red background taking up 100 percent of the screen's width and height let's write the logic for our despawn main menu system now first let's go to main menu components use bevy prelude component let's create a main menu component let's go back to main menu systems layout here inside our spawn method we're going to grab everything inside, which is just this node bundle right now, wrap it in a tuple. We'll expand this just so you can see it a bit better. There's our tuple with currently just the node bundle. Let's add our main menu component we just created now as well. We're going to now also need to import use crate main menu components main menu to get this main menu component in this scope. Now, for our despawn system, for our system parameters, we're gonna need commands and a main menu query of type query to get the entity with our main menu component. Make sure you spell entity correctly, unlike me. Inside the body of our system now, we're gonna say if let okay main menu entity gets main menu query dot get single commands dot entity main menu entity dot despawn recursive this time. The reason we want despawn recursive is because despawn recursive despawns the current entity and all its children. In our case, we're going to make a complicated UI with multiple pieces, with multiple children UI nodes, so we want to despawn all of them. Let's cargo run our application now. Here we're on our main menu. I'm going to hit G to go into my game now. And look at that, the main menu despawned. Let's hit M to go back to our main menu. And there we go, it's back. Let's go back to main menu, systems layout, and actually start building out the layout we looked at before. We wanna create the following layout. You can see we're gonna need a play button and a quit button, and this title here at the top. Here on line 27, on the last parentheses of the spawn method, but before this ID method, we're gonna create, we're gonna call another method called with children. We're gonna use a closure here with parent brackets and inside here it can now nest child UI nodes as children of the current node. I'm going to use comments here just to structure things. We're going to want our title here, our play button, and our quit button. Looking back at our layout here, we want to lay these out in a column. We want to have some spacing between them and we want them to be centered on both the main axis and the horizontal axis. That means here for our parent bundle, for our parent UI node, we're gonna to have to set some more properties on our style. Let's set the flex direction to column. Let's justify our content to the center, align items to the center, and then let's also use the gap property to leave an eight pixel gap between each child node. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna skip the title for now because it's a little more complicated. Let's do the two buttons first. Let's go back to main menu, components and create two more components here. We're going to want a play button component and a quit button component. 
let's go back to main menu systems layout. What we're gonna do here is with this parent from this closure, we're gonna say parent. And now we can call spawn again, just like we did with commands. And inside spawn, let's start with a tuple. For the first element, we want a button bundle. And for the second one, we want our play button component. Let's make sure we're importing this. I'm just gonna change this import statement to star to get all of the components. Now in our button bundle, we're gonna to wanna to set the style component to give it a size. We're gonna to wanna to set the background color as well. And we'll leave the rest, and we'll leave the rest as default. For the size component of our button bundle, let's use the following size. We're gonna give the button a width of 200 pixels and a height of 80 pixels. For the background color, we're gonna give it the following RGB values an R of 0.15, G 0.15, and B of 0.15. It's like a dark gray color. Back in our style component, let's set the rest of these to default. Hit save, and it looks like, oh, something went wrong. On your color, you need to call the into method. And this is mad at me because for this spawn method here, I need to end it with a semicolon. Save and everything's all right. Now for my quit button, I'm gonna want the same size and the same color. So I'm gonna extract these to be reusable variables. For instance, we can go ahead and make this color a public const. So let's cut this. Let's go to main menu, styles, use bevy prelude at the top. Let's make a pub const normal button color and give it those values. Back to main menu, systems layout. At the top of our file, let's say use main menu styles star back at our play button now we can say normal button color dot into and now we can reuse this we're also going to want to reuse the style that we're using for the play button on the quit button so let's try to extract this next grab that style component and cut it main menu styles let's make another public const let's call it button style type style paste this However, we can't call default like we did here before, so we're gonna have to use a different syntax. Dot dot style default. And then end this with a semicolon. With that, we can now copy our button style, go back to main menu systems layout, and put button style there. And now we can reuse them. Now, we're missing something on our button, and that's text. We're gonna go another step deeper down this hierarchy now. We're gonna go parent, spawn, where these parentheses end, here. I'm gonna call with children again, say parent, closure. And now in here, and now these children will be children of the entity being spawned here, which is our play button. Inside here, we're gonna wanna add some text. So we say parent, dot spawn again this time we don't need a tuple we're only going to use one bundle we're going to use a text bundle open that up as a shorthand just to get things to compile nicely you can immediately put in default just to make sure it all works nicely here on this spawn method here on this spawn method we're missing a semicolon and there we go format to save and it looks like everything's happy. Let's open this up again just because we're going to need to fill things out here. Here in the text bundle, if we click into this, you can see all its properties. It also has a style component. We're only concerned about the text component in this case though, so let's go back out. We need to set our text component on our text bundle. Text is a little weird. We're going to have to, if we click into text, you'll see it has sections, alignment, and line break behavior. Let's go back out. We're gonna be interested in the sections and the alignment. So for the sections field of our text component, we're gonna say the following. It's gonna be a vector of sections. We only need one section, text section new. But we pass in a value. We'll call it play to say play. And now we also need to pass in a text style. Let's create a new one, text style. In text style, if we click into this, we're gonna to have to set the font font size and the color. Let's get back to layout. Well, what do we set the font to? Trick question. We don't have a font yet. 
let's go get a font. If you go to github.com bevy engine slash bevy, if you go to their assets directory to fonts, you're allowed to use these fonts in your project. So we'll use these. I'm just going to grab the bold font. I'm going to click the little download button here, download it, go to my downloads, copy this font, go to my bevy ball game directory, open the assets folder, make a new folder inside of my assets folder called fonts and paste the font in there. Going back to our project now in VS Code, you should now see you have the font in your project. And now from here, we can say assetserver.load. Let's pass in the path to our font, which is fonts slash bold.ttf. Next, we need to set the font size. Let's set it to be 32. And lastly, the font color. We'll say color RGB and we'll set each value to one, which is just white. I think we can use the shorthand here as well, color, colon, colon, white. Let's do that instead. Now that we're done with the text sections, let's carry on. Next, we need to worry about the alignment. We'll set our text alignment to text alignment center. And then for the line break behavior, we'll just use default. Going back up, going up one more level to the text bundle after the text component has now all been set. Don't forget to add a comma there. Save, remove the comma here after default, save, and it looks like that's working. That looks good. We've now spawned in, <clears throat> we now have a text bundle as a child of our button bundle play button entity, which is a child of our main menu. You can see that's starting to get rather nested, but that's what we have to do. Let's cargo run this now and see what we have. And look at that, we've got a square with the word play in it. Let's keep going. Now, why wasn't our text aligned in the center? We've got the alignment set here to center, but we also need to worry about how we lay out the children of our button bundle here. So what's going on in our button style? Let's go to our button style. And we're missing two important Flexbox properties here. To center it completely, we also need justify content to center and align items to center as well. Let's cargo run now and see what it looks like. And there we go, our text is centered. Let's copy and paste our play button code to create a quit button. Here for our play button, let's grab all of this code. The button bundle with its child text bundle. I'm gonna copy that, go here below my quit button paste it in. What do I want to change here? I want to change this component to quit button. What else do I want to change? I want to change this word play to quit. If we cargo run now, look at that. Now we've got a play button and a quit button. Before we set up interactions for our play button and our quit button, let's do our title next. This one's going to be more complicated than our play button and our quit button. Looking at our reference here, let's start by creating a container to hold an image, some text, and another image. We're gonna just want a blank node bundle. Let's start with that now. Parent.spawn. Remember, this is still a child of our main menu entity. Node bundle. We need to give this a style. We want the flex direction to be row. We wanna center everything, so we're gonna use justify content and align items both to center. Let's give it a size as well. Let's make it slightly bigger than our buttons. We'll set the width to be 300 and the height to be 120. And then finally, let's leave the rest on default. Looking back at this, remember we're gonna want three children here, an image, some text, and an image. So let's use with children again, parent closure. Let's put a semicolon here on the end so we don't forget it later. I'm gonna use some comments here to block things out for us. There you can see the comments for image one, the text, and image two. Let's spawn in an image bundle. Let's call spawn to spawn in an image bundle. Image bundle, what do we want to set on here? We're also going to want to dictate its style. Don't forget to use the style type first. Let's give it a size of 64 by 64 and a margin of eight pixels all around and set the rest of the style values to default.
sorry, it's flashing red. That happens a lot when working with UI. After we set the style component on our image bundle, we're gonna wanna set the image component. We're gonna call asset server again, dot load, sprites, ball blue large dot PNG dot into, comma. And then after the image component, let's hit the rest of default. Save, semicolon here at the end of this spawn method. And there we go, some of the red lines went away. It looks like we don't need this comma here after default. Again, when working with UI, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of errors getting shown as you're working on this. The syntax can be a little jarring. Next, let's set up our text. We'll call parent.spawn text bundle text of type text. Let's start with the sections again. It's gonna be a vector of sections, a vector of text sections. We only need one, it's a text section. New, let's call the title Bevy Ball Game. Next, we're gonna to need to pass in a text style as well for this text section. For the text style, let's start with the font. We use the same font as we did before. So asset server.load, fonts, Firo Sans bold, TTF, comma, font size, let's make this 64 since it's the title, comma, color, we'll use white again. After this section, we need to add in the alignment. We'll set this alignment to text alignment center as well. And then for the rest of the values, we'll leave them at default. That's it for the text component here of the text bundle. After that, let's say comma, and leave the rest of these components at default for the text bundle as well. Hit save. What errors do we have? I think we're just missing a semicolon here at the end. Save, and that looks good. Now for image two, we can just copy and paste this. Let's grab the code from image one, go here to image two, and let's just change this sprite here to be ball red large. Save that, let's cargo run now. And you can see we've got our title with the two images. That looks good. I want to get rid of this red background. It was just supposed to be temporary, so let's go get rid of that. Let's go up here to our main menu entity. Here where we're setting the background. Let's just get rid of that line. Cargo run again to check. And there we go, that looks good. Let's do a little bit of cleanup before we add interactions to these two buttons. Now, this is a lot of code. It's all very nested, so it's kind of difficult to modify. We're also reusing, we're also copy pasting values, which we don't need to do. So let's extract some of these. Let's start with our image bundle here. For this style, I'm gonna grab this style, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna go to main menu, styles. I'm gonna create a pub const image style of type style. Paste in the value I just copied. Semicolon here at the end and we're gonna to need to change this default statement to say dot dot style default instead. Save to format, copy this image style constant, back to main menu systems layout, paste image style in there, and then let's scroll down to image two as well. Grab all of this, paste that in there. There we go, we've shortened the code a little. Let's go to our buttons and also do some cleanup here. We already successfully reused our button style and button color. Inside our text though, we can also reuse some values here. For example, this text style, let's grab that, cut. Go to main menu, styles. Now, this is gonna be slightly different. We're actually gonna make a function to return this instead. And I'm gonna call it as follows. I'm gonna call it get button text style. The reason this is a function is because I need the asset server but we're using a reference this time. So it's a reference of type resource of type asset server. And we're gonna return a text style. Inside here, I'm just gonna paste the text style I got. And that's good. Now let's call this function in main menu systems layout here get button text style, pass in a reference to our asset server, 
And there we go, we've shortened this code a little as well. Let's go down to our quit button. And there we, we drop it down from, what is this, five lines down to one line. Just little tricks to get your UI code to be a little smaller. And that looks pretty good. Here's another one for the title. For the title text. We can also pull out this text style. We're not reusing it, but it's also just another way to keep the file a little smaller. Let's cut. Go to main menu. Styles. Let's create another function here. Get title text style. Asset server. Return text style. Paste in the text style we just had. Let's call this function from main menu systems layout in our title text. Get title, get title text style, tongue twisters. And we pass in a reference to the asset server. We get the same behavior, but our code's just a little bit cleaner. We can shorten this as well for our title node bundle style. We can pull this out as well. Let's cut that. Let's go to main menu styles. Another pub const. Let's call it title style, type style. We set it to be the style we just grabbed. Semicolon here on the end. Change this default to style default. Copy title style, main menu layout, main menu systems layout. Paste it in there. And there we go. That code's also a little shorter now. And finally, let's do it with the main menu style as well. For the main menu, node bundle style, cut that. Main menu, styles. Let's put this one right in the top because it's the most important. Or not the most important, but the, the senior most node. We'll call it main menu style, type style. Paste in our style, we just cut. Semicolon, change this to style default. Copy main menu style, main menu systems layout, paste in the style there. And there we go, this is pretty lean now and makes it easier for us to work with. Let's continue. Let's go to main menu, styles. Before we make our buttons interactive, I want you to add the following two public constants as well for hovered button color and press button color with their respective values here. Next, we're gonna start on making our buttons interactive. We're gonna to go to main menu, systems, interactions. Use Bevy Prelude, and let's get started. Let's create a system called interact with play button and another system called interact with quit button. For our system parameters here with interact with play button, we're gonna to wanna to make a, a, we're gonna to wanna to write a query to get our play button specifically. So we say mute button query of type query. For our first argument, we're going to want a tuple. And for our second argument, we're going to want another tuple for our filters. For the components we want, we want the interaction component, which is provided by Bevy on buttons as part of the button bundle. And we're also going to want a mutable reference to our background color component, because we want to change the background color when we hover or click on a button. Now for our query filters, we're gonna only want this query to succeed if the interaction has changed. So we use the changed filter to look at the interaction component. And then lastly, when we've seen before, the width filter, we only care about the play button. Save to format. Now my IDE was smart enough to import this for me, but you can also import it manually. We're gonna need the main menu components play button. I'll change this to a star because we're gonna need the quit button in a moment as well here. Now inside the body of our system, we're gonna write the following query. We know we're only gonna have one play button, so we'll use the if let okay block syntax instead of the iteration syntax. Inside our okay, we need our tuple since we're asking for two things. We need our interaction and our mutable background color and we say if let okay get button query dot get single mute parentheses 
And now we have access to our interaction and our background color. Now we want to match on this interaction, but we need to dereference it. So we say match dereference operator interaction. And now we're going to have to match on each type. Interaction clicked, interaction hovered, and interaction none. Inside the clicked case, we need to dereference our background color because we want to set it to be a new color. And we'll say, what do we want to set this to? We need to import from our styles. We say use crate main menu styles. We want our hovered button color, our normal button color, and our press button color. So now let's set this background to the press button color. We also have to call dot into here, semicolon. For the hovered case, we want to set this to our hovered button color. And for our none case, we want to set it back to the normal button color because we're not hovering or clicking on the button. Save to format. Now we can copy and paste a lot of our code here for our interactive quit button. Let's copy this whole button query as for our system parameter. All we need to do is change this with filter to our quit button. We can grab this whole inner block as well for our system body. Save that. Copy this system. Go to main menu module. Let's add our systems here to our main menu plugin. Add systems, tuple, interact with play button, interact with quit button, inset, on update, app state, main menu. We need to import these two systems from use systems, interactions, star, save, Let's cargo run now. And now look at that. We can hover over the buttons and they change color. And if we click on them, they turn green. Let's add some logic for when we click on them now. Back to main menu, systems, interactions. For our interact with play button here, we're gonna wanna change our app state with the next state resource. So we say, mutable app state next state which is a mutable resource of type next state of type app state. Inside our click case here, we say app state next state dot set. What do we want to set? App state to game, semicolon. We need to import app state here. Use create app state. Down here for our quit button, what do we want to do? We want to send the app exit event. We're going to need mutable app exit event writer, which we've seen before and used. Event writer of type app exit. Remember, this is an event provided by Bevy. We've already set this up to send this event when we hit the escape button. In the same fashion, we're going to say app exit event writer dot send dot send the app exit event semicolon you also need to use this at the top of our file save to format and both of these systems look good now let's cargo run if we hit play we're in our game now I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to go back to the main menu. Let's see if the quit button works. I click quit and the application closes. Awesome. So that's our main menu done. Hello, future Jacques here. The recording for the other three UI screens has gotten very long and I don't think it's going to add much value to the series to make a three hour long video on UI. As such, I've decided to omit the recording for the other three screens. The HUD, the pause menu, and the game over menu. I'll give you a brief overview of the code now, 
The code for these screens will be in the final code for this episode, and I'll give you a brief overview of the code now, but I leave it up to you as an exercise to go through the final code for this episode yourselves, to set up the UI yourself or clone the project. In the final code, I want you to pay close attention to the interactions and update modules of each UI plugin to see how I'm updating the UI. In the source directory, in the game module, you'll see I've created a new directory here called UI, which holds our game over menu, our HUD, and our pause menu. The UI module has the game UI plugin, holding the plugins for each of these screens. If you open up these directories, you can see each of them have a module corresponding to their plugin, the game over menu plugin, the heads up display menu plugin, and the pause menu plugin, with their respective systems for spawning, despawning, interacting, and updating the UI. If we cargo run our application now, you'll see if we hit play, we're on the pause screen, we resume, we start playing, our score, our score updates as we collect stars, and the enemy's number increases as enemies spawn. On the game over screen, we see our final score. We're able to restart the game, go to the main menu, or quit the game. That brings us to the end of episode 10. We've covered how to build a user interface using Bevy UI, how to lay out our UI using the Flexbox model. You've learned the fundamentals of how to build a hierarchical UI using the four building blocks, being node bundles, button bundles, text bundles, and image bundles, and how to interact with and update our UI using Bevy ECS. Congratulations everyone for making it this far. We're nearly done learning the basics of the Bevy game engine. My plan for the next episodes are to cover optimization, profiling, debugging, and other tools you'll need as you make more Bevy projects. Thank you all very much for watching and see you in the next one.